Hello, Lower Dauphin families. This is Rob Schultz, Superintendent of Schools, and it is Monday, March 15th, and I have a video update for you as we continue to plan and prepare for uh, our reopening on April 6th. I want to thank everybody who helped uh, and responded to our initial survey to help get us an idea of how many families would be looking at uh, return to in-person instruction at the high school and middle school. The initial survey uh, results showed us that 83% of the high school uh, families are looking at uh, returning on April 6th for in-person instruction and 85% of the people who responded to the middle school survey indicated they would return to school in a daily in-person instructional model as well. The purpose of this video is to let you know that now we need a commitment from you and I wanna give you some important information that you'll wanna consider before making your commitment because we're gonna ask you to commit to either a daily in-person instructional model or a daily fully online synchronous model. And we're gonna ask you to do that knowing that we're not gonna allow students to move back and forth between those two models from April 6th to June 4th without extenuating circumstances. A big piece of this that you need to know and understand is how we're going to take attendance. Students who select the daily online synchronous model will be required to attend daily live Zoom classes at which time attendance will be taken. If you select daily in-person instruction, your student would be required to be physically present in the building to be in attendance. And this is very important to understand. It will not be an option for them to say, I just don't want to go to school today. I'm just going to do this via Zoom. If you select in person, the expectation is that you will be in school uh, on a daily basis uh, as long as you're healthy uh, and can do that. If you're again, it, we're going to take attendance similar to how we took attendance for those choosing in person instruction, uh, similar to what we did prior to March of 2020. You know, we've asked families from the beginning to monitor symptoms and please stay home if you don't feel well. That goes for students and staff. You can zoom into class, but know you will still be marked absent. And you can say, Rob, why are you going to do that? Why are you going to mark a student absent if they zoom in? Uh, a student it can try to keep up with classwork uh, if you're not feeling well, but what we want you to do is rest uh, and get healthy and return when you're healthy. You'll have the opportunity to make up work the same way you did when you were absent from school prior to March of 2020. There's only one exception that will allow students to zoom in if you select in-person instruction, and that's if you're a close contact and required to quarantine. So if you become a close contact at school or school activity, and we need to say that you need to quarantine for a period of time, we would allow you to zoom and, and mark you as present. If you're a close contact outside of the school setting and you contact us and say, hey, I'm a close contact, I'm gonna to need to Zoom, we would need to receive confirmation from the Department of Health and they've been excellent to work with so far. So in the circumstances that are not related to school, um, we would make sure that we confirm that you are a close contact and need to quarantine. And then you could Zoom in and be marked as present. Face coverings and social distancing. We had several questions about this. The most recent face covering order is still in effect and will be enforced. With approximately 85% of our students returning, we're gonna social distance to the maximum extent possible, but we'll not be able to social distance in all of our classrooms. The only exception is lunch periods, and we're gonna be able to social distance during our lunches when students are eating and drinking without face coverings. And that was one of the things that is part of the attestation form that we signed as a district saying we would be able to do that if we had a return. So to accomplish social distancing during the lunch periods, uh, we'll use larger spaces in our buildings and that may have an impact on some of our other programs that typically use those spaces. So it could be uh, the weather or it could be other uh, factors that may impact some of our traditional programs so that we can use spaces to make sure students are socially distanced at lunch. Uh, we're looking at using some of the bleachers in the uh, gymnasium. We're looking at using some of the auditorium space at the high school. So it may not be your traditional lunch table um, that you've been used to uh, over the years or even during the hybrid model. 
So we're going to be have to get a little bit creative and we're going to need some flexibility uh, with students, but you should know that before making your selection on whether you're going to return for in person or not. We will continue with some of our virtual days on Fridays and we're going to put a Tuesday in there as well and I'll explain why. Our teachers are going to be serving students in two different instructional models, uh, which is very challenging. And to do the best job that we can do with that, we're going to need a few days where um, we run our current Friday schedule where we have morning classes and the teachers uh, are given some time in the afternoon to plan and to meet and discuss to make sure they're meeting the needs of all the students. The days we've selected for virtual days are Friday, April 16th, Friday, April 30th, Friday, May 7th, Tuesday, May 18th, and we picked that Tuesday because we are now a polling place for the primary election uh, at the high school and at our field house. So we made that day a virtual day for the students and that will follow a traditional Friday virtual schedule. The last Friday that we'll have as a Friday virtual day is May 28th. So the, the important things you need to understand is the attendance piece is a big piece. You need to under, also understand that the social distancing will be to the maximum extent possible, except for when we are uh, eating lunch, which we will make sure we have social distancing in place. Um, the, the other key piece is there's nothing's changed with the face coverings. We're gonna follow that. So need, parents, please talk with your children. Please make sure they understand that we're asking a commitment here from April 6th to June 4th. We're not gonna be bouncing back and forth between programs unless there's extenuating circumstances. And the key is, if you don't feel well, please stay home and make up the work when you're healthy. The only exception to that is if you're quarantining uh, due to COVID as a close contact, we will allow you to zoom in if you've selected in-person instruction. So the timeline for this, we have a survey that is now live on our district webpage. If you go to the LD website, ldsd.org, um, or you have under headlines, you'll have until Monday, March 22nd to complete the survey. If people do not go in and complete the survey, we will make that selection for you and the criteria we will use for selection of the program for you would be if you are a hybrid student, you would become an in-person, um, attending school in person every day. Or if you are currently in a synchronous model uh, and not coming in for hybrid, if you don't respond to the survey, we will keep you in the synchronous model. So if you have questions, please make sure you contact Mr. Todd Newhart, 566-5300 or at the email address on the screen. Thank you and take care.